a story, uh, or a, a selection of stories, short stories from the Irish diaspora. Uh, it's, this is, we're doing the second part, the first part. Uh, can we go to slide? Uh, I'm not sure. There we are. Uh, in chapter one, we went from uh, Queen Liz the first uh, to uh, uh, Charles the first. Uh, they were both. Uh, Elizabeth was quite cruel. Uh, but not as cruel and stupid as Charlie was. We we'll move on. Then they'd also, by then, they started getting into the Roman Catholic Church in Ireland, or into the Irish because they belonged to the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, their only form of identity, and they fought for, for <laughs> since about Elizabeth's time. Uh, the English uh, got stuck into the Irish, and the Irish fought back uh, through this whole period. Uh, as, as you see there, Cromwell, he said. Uh, <laughs> ordered his Irish landowners to go to Hill or, or to Connacht, one of ancients, uh, Ireland's ancient kingdoms. And you can't grow anything in Connacht, it's just rocky ground. Uh, that was the place where they actually built the hedges or the fences and then put the, the stuff in them, literally built their own soil up over, over centuries. Uh, and he didn't care about anything, he was a very cruel man. People now and again go, oh, he wasn't that bad, but believe me, he was. Uh, and then from there, we went to this precocious, cynical, self-indulgent, skilled in moral invasions, generally in the kingly life in trawdy dissipation. No friend of the Irish, they had hoped he would be, uh, fruit is hope, and so it goes. And we go to the next one, which is hello, hello, now. And it's Ireland, 1741, round about 1159, we like to be exact. Uh, one minute to midnight, uh, just as we're going into one of the great famines now. I am an Englishman. Uh, I was once upon a time, but I had the operation. Uh, and I'm Australian now. And I can talk like it. But in this one, I'm going to be rather an upper class Tommy because it is actually, we're, what's it called? Adversaries. Ad adversary. Well, well, yes, we hate John each other. John represents the Irish uh, and I represent the English. Uh, so uh, when you hear silly voices coming out, that's me. I'm going to start off with the praises. Well, with, with the tune, anyway. The tune. Are you ready? <coughs> now, an island dying under Albion's cold gaze, millions of the paddies and the biddies wither away. Next famine's endless slow death, fighting for every breath, as dead as their potatoes are dead. The Irish corn grown for English bread, heedless of fleas, is shipped overseas. Or reason and justice and mercy for the treacherous Irish have fled. Long, bleak years for those paddies and biddies, seen as non entities helots, peasants and cows, old and cold before their time, all done on the iron back of Albion's perfidious perception of reason and right. Till you're old and cold before your time, and no heart left for tears, child. Oh, the parade is a gross small
Bid their captors in a rice of a tune and rock off to join the bold bush rangers, led by bold Jack Donnelly. And already new songs of rebellion are sung in this new southern land. Yes, set songs not to be sung in public house, in public hall, public bars, or even behind a ridiculous bleed and flimsy bottle and more. Dumb, Is it comedy law? Tis comedy law, the bummies roar. Bald, said Patrick, oh, I don't tick so. My body may be theirs, but my voice is my own. It just can't stop the music. They didn't regret it,
chest. So when Bumble's ass rides on the Kelly farm to bully and harass, the women folk tried to calm Trooper Fitzpatrick. Twas he who lit the fuse, full of booze, came to abuse. In he barges, stayed to accuse, laid false charges. And Mrs. Kelly goes to jail for facing down an empire. Brave Mrs. Kelly, and with yet another Kelly in her belly. And so it went. Justice came to naught until finally poor Ned was caught. <laughs> poor Ned. You're better off dead. At least you'll get some peace of mind. They're out on the track. They're right on your back. Boy, they're gonna hang you high. When Judge Benton Barry sentenced Ned to hang, their bells of celebration rang. And the colonies folk, commoners, to a woman and a bloke, one sixth of the entire colonies folk, loudly called for mercy. What? For mercy? Go figure, hang the bugger. That's what I said. But the Oz Lords of Misrule, slaves to the crown, Tommy Fox, keepers of shops, a mob of whatnots, right, rightly minded and unnecessarily cruel, Scorn the punters, please. When Judge Redmond Barry did guilty, fellow, Ned smiles and says, Be fine, fellow, it won't be too long before you join me. You got that fitting right. Now, join us in heart and song. You know this song, sing along. Pawn me, you better off dead. At least you get some peace of mind. Add on. Right around, but they hung for Christ on bail. Six kids at home, two still on the breast, and they wouldn't even give a bail. Sing, poor Ned, better off dead. At least you get some peace of mind. Out on the track, right on your back. Boy, they're gonna hang you high. I might be a bush ranger, but I'm not a murdering man. Well, I didn't want to shoot Kennedy or a couple on a gun. He alone could have saved his life by throwing down his gun. Poor Ned, better off dead. At least you get some peace of mind.
sun. It's 9.30 in 1898 and thousands upon thousands of those Irish folk come to be milled and milked into the outland of all. Yet another Paddy Diaspora, this time all of their own making and before too long. Look how they and their adopted country has grown. Paddy's now living in a land if you're white and free. With a sight more choice in store. Yes, and I might add. In a land with a growing working class voice. Unionising. Yes, unionising. Uh, not good. High time to join the Poms in a bloody good war. A high time for division, divide, devising, dividing. Don't think anybody, fighting anybody else. Jolly good. We're very good at that. Thank you very much. On it. See how our friendly corporates glow when wars go. There's a bloody sight more money in exploding people than there is in feeding them food, bullshit, and boots. Because of time restraints, we shall pass over our uncivil war, the boring war, two world wars, and since then, a dozen or so highly profitable world-shattering mini-wars for our arms manufacturers. Because that's another story of yet another bloody patriot game, great and bloody glory. And don't we all know that it's the same old story? My darling, it's the same old story still in the making. We're still taking and unmaking, and you're still taking and barely making it. <laughs> As our, our world, world turns, turns and burns. burns. And now, in that weary old Emerald Isle of Iron, as the 60s danced along on the swinging wings of a rock and roll song, punctuated by the sound of gun and bomb, the working pageant are still doing it tough. Paddy, we say, Paddy. Sometimes the only way to make a turn, the only way to make a quit, is to do Paddy, to do what your daddy did. It was down the Glen Road, McAlpine's men, with their shovels slung behind them. By. The crack was good in Cricklewood, and they wouldn't leave the crowd. Yeah. With glasses flying and biddies crying, sure, Paddy was going to town. Oh, mother dear, I'm over here, and I'm never coming back. What keeps me here is a rake of the ladies and the crack. As the down the crack came the cosplays men with their shovels slung behind them. Cause in the pub that they drank their stuff, now in the spike they'll fight them. And sweated blood and then washed down mud with pipes and quarts of beer. And now they're on. Nice and 
building new canals and railways. Tunnel tigering through London clay. Built all your thicking motorways. That's why. The paddies have come to town. Cause they're lame and hard navigating. And they're workers of renown. That's why the English contractors prefer their Irish tractors. The Celtic Cloud to the Pony Shore. Not your spirited, stubborn, recalcitrant Irish fools. Breakers of hearts, breakers of rules and heads. Building the tunnels of Merry England. That's why the Paddies have come to town. All you pincher laddies, and you long distance men, don't ever work for the gal mine, for Wimpy, or John Wayne. John England. You'll stand behind the mixer until your skin has turned to tan, and they'll say, Good on you, Paddy. <coughs> and if you're dead lucky, Paddy, ha <laughs> you'll have your mum there.
been a part two. Thank you very much. <laughs> we realised it wasn't a barrel of laughs. It wasn't exactly, we usually do comedy shows, but uh, every now and again, we, we sort like, of... We like to show that we're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> we're not like, even slight.